Good morning, everyone. Um, today, uh, we start task six, which goes on to portraiture. So, um, thanks for, for tuning in and having um, a watch of, of the video. We are um, going on to portraits in our Learn to Draw and Paint for Free course. So we've done lots of observation work so far. We've looked at tonal scales and we've done uh, some still life work. And portraits are usually something that is quite tricky um, and students are reluctant to to tackle it. So we are going to start right at the basics of portraiture today and we're going to go through how to measure out a face. So this isn't an observation, okay? This is just um, a sketch, okay? So no tone is needed. It's just to work out the proportions of a portrait because if you know those rules, then it makes it much, much easier um, when you are observing to have those rules in the back of your mind, okay? So to start off with, we're going to go through each of them. On the, um, the blog, which I've put on the Facebook group, um, is a step-by-step -step guide, okay? So there'll be lots more information there. So if you miss anything, um, then obviously we've got the, the blog. So let me start off with something really basic, which is the oval okay so you start off with just a basic oval shape now to get a rough idea of a face um your oval needs to be about two the width needs to be about two thirds of the height okay just as a rough guide so you'll start by doing just a rough oval and i'm just going to show you how you can um block out and put some measurement lines on here to work out where the features of a face do fall. So obviously it's all about observation, isn't it? And obviously the, the face that you are observing, that's where you have to get the right side of your brain to kick in and really look at the lines and the shapes to make it accurate. But if you've got these rules, then it does make it a little bit easier to see where things go. So you've got your oval and as you can see, I've split um the the width of my oval into five okay so if i just draw a line right across the middle of my oval okay just to start off with and then i divide this line into five so very roughly here i'm just going to put now you can be really accurate with this and even get a ruler just so you've got all the proportions absolutely perfect so this is just a rough guide for me to show you so there's that one there so i've divided it into five roughly into five okay and right through the middle of my oval okay now if you have the bottom of your oval there you want to divide that into half as well so that's roughly there Again, being really accurate would be worth it. So if you've got a ruler, you can make sure that these are absolutely perfect. And again, from the top here, halfway. Okay, so now we've divided the face up roughly. This middle line here is where the eyes are. Okay, so a lot of students, when they start portraits, they tend to go a bit high with the eyes, but they're actually exactly through the middle, roughly. So we've got column one, column two. Now, column two is where the first eye would go. So roughly sketch yourself in an eye there, and then the width of the, the bridge of the nose in between the two eyes is exactly the same. So you miss that middle one out and then you've got your other eye here. And having these lines might make it a little bit easier to get them more symmetrical. So let's just sketch in. They might look a bit alien-like because I say we're not observing anyone. It's just a rough guide to proportions that's all we're doing and then you can refer to this afterwards when you are observing just to check you've got those rules right okay so eyes right there 
Now this middle um, section here is obviously the nose. So halfway between the eyes and the base of the chin is where the nose would sit. So you can draw yourself in a nose here. Now because we're not observing, the left side of the brain is kicking in here and drawing what it thinks is a nose. But obviously when you're doing a real portrait, you would really have a look at those shapes to draw much more accurately. But for, for this, we're just showing where the features go. So this would be where the nose is on this line here. Now, if you do another half line, if you split in half where the nose is to the chin down here, that is where the lips would go. Now, you can see our face is a bit wide here. So obviously, again, you would start to shape your face and again you'd have to really observe wouldn't you the face that you are looking at but the lips would go about here now so the rules do change slightly depending on what you read on google so this line here they say is the middle line of the lips but when you um, really look they might be slightly higher so again it depends it depends what you're observing doesn't it but the other rule would be if you draw a line down from the center of the eyes that's where the edge of the mouth would would finish so the mouth finishes right in the middle of where the eyes are okay so that would be the edges of the mouth here so I'm just going to do the line slightly higher slightly higher We see you've got the lip part here just to help guide where the lips are going to go. Okay, so roughly that is where the lips would sit on a portrait. Okay, and they would finish in line with the eyes. Okay, now ears as well. Eyes, so it would be on this line here in the line with the eyes and would finish at the base of the nose. So that's where ears would fit on your portrait. Now this line here is obviously the hairline. So again, depending on who you're observing, but that should, this, um, there's more hair than what you have obviously realized. So obviously you've got to take into account maybe a fringe. Okay, so maybe you've got you know, a bit of a fringe going on here. And then the hair would come bigger than the actual oval of the, your initial oval, okay? Depending on how thick the hair is, obviously, but it would come out above. So there we go. So they are rough proportions of the face, okay? Rough proportions. So divide an oval into five, okay? Um, and the middle line, right uh, cutting across the middle here would be where the eyes are. Okay, so column two and column four. Column three is the nose. So halfway between the eyes and the chin would roughly be the base of the nose. Divide where the base of the nose and the base of the chin is halfway, that's where the lips would be. So if you've got this rough guide in front of you, when you now are observing um, a portrait, whether it's a self-portrait or you're drawing a picture from a photo maybe of somebody, then these are rough guides. And if you've got those rules, as I say, in the back of your mind, it will make it much easier to get things in the right place. Okay, so that's what the task is, task it to start portraiture, is to have this rough guide and to understand where those proportions sit. So remember the oval to start with is fairly important, two fifths, the width is two fifths of the height of your oval. So if you get that in you can then start to shape around it and obviously you can put in different features and you can work out where eyebrows go. Okay, which would roughly be there. But again, that would then depend on who you are observing, wouldn't it? But this sketch doesn't really need all of the tone and all of the shading. You're literally just working out 
where everything would sit. Would make your portraits a lot, lot easier. And then again, think back to our first lesson, right side of the brain, really look at the image you are drawing, even like you would the still life. If you've got a photo, you can turn it upside down or sideways so you can actually really see shapes because a face is obviously very recognizable for us so when we come to do an observation drawing our brain our left side of the brain will take over and try and draw what we think a nose or an eye would look like and that's the where people fall down because they're not drawing actually what they are seeing so a few hints there, a few tips to get you going. I think if you've got this basis in front of you when you start your first portrait drawing, which will start next week, then it will be a great foundation for you. So take a look at the blog, have a look at the resource, which breaks this down and tells you all the rules. By all means, I would um, encourage students usually to write those rules around and, you know, put your little notes like it's halfway um, and a quarter and things like that. Just write all of those measurements around so that you can quickly refer to this when you are doing your observation drawing. So good luck. Okay, just face proportions for, t for this week. Um, and then we'll go on to actual techniques to start to add tone to our portraits and get them looking as real as possible. So good luck with it. Upload if you want any uh, work that you do for any tips and feedback I'll give to you if you do that. So good luck with it. <laughs> See you next week. Bye.